Time to hit the uh, Virtual Cabin 2.0 to discover the mysteries and secrets of the Friday the 13th franchise. This update just went live on, or not just went live, it actually went live uh, a few hours ago on PlayStation 4. I'm not sure when Xbox One comes out, but this will be one hell of a ride. Okay, the description may say uh, Virtual Cabin 2.0, but this is just the beta, so. I think the 2.0 might be might come out in the original or not in the original in the uh, after Christmas or New Year I guess okay so let's start on the second floor microwave in a round a uh, round table about the Friday the 13th series special effects master Tom Savini described the initial idea for Jason's death in part 4 I thought that young, a young Tommy who has, you know, who was, or, quote, I think that young Tommy who was an effects kid and inventor would take a microwave oven apart and put a reflector on the shooter with a variable setting of 1 to 10. On 1, it would melt the toy soldier. My idea was to stick that in Jason's head and cook his head from within and make it explode. So I had to sell that to the money guys. I called him and what uh, what he said was no, no, no. The Friday the thirteenth formula is killing naked teenagers in the wood woods and household implements. I'm thinking this is a household implement. End quote. Interesting, very, very interesting. Deborah Kim. Friday the Thirteenth. The game is feature. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth. The game is features a wide range of voiceover talent. The counselor Deborah Kim is uh, voiced by veteran Christina V, who has helped voice many popular animated and film projects. Uh, Apple. From a watery start to a toxic end, Jason spent Friday the Thirteenth part. Eight, Jason takes Manhattan covered in goo. According to Kane Hodder, they put slime on him in every single shot. He was wet the entire movie. After looking up with, uh, hooking up with Tina, Crispin Glover's character Jimmy goes downstairs for a celebrity us celebratory bottle of wine. Not having the means to open the bottle, he calls out for a corkscrew. Jason obliges by slamming it and into his hand before hacking him in the face with a meat cleaver. You should be careful what you wish for in Friday f in a Friday film. Damn straight. Menu. Jason has menaced several diners throughout the series. This menu is inspired by the diner in part 5. Another diner in Jason Takes Manhattan features Jason bursting in, hunting Renee and Sean. A large cook attempts to thwart the killer before being picked up and thrown into a mirror. That cook was six foot seven stuntman Ken Kurzinger, who would be go on to play Jason in another film. Nice. This is actually very interesting that they actually did this. This shit. I want out of the goddamn cabin, mate. Automobiles of the films. From the CJ7s in the original movie to Megan's Hot Rod in part 6, there has been many memorable automobiles in the films. In part 5, Ethel's 
Wild Sun Jr. or Ethel, don't know how to pronounce that, crazily rides a motorcycle before being decapitated with a meat cleaver. Without much of a budget, the director had the actor playing Jr. Ron Sloan to undo the stunt himself. It required Sloan to ride a motorcycle recklessly through the forest with a $50,000 camera mounted to the handlebars. It's surprising that they could afford that much when the budget for the film in general was pretty was pretty sh uh, small budget. Jason and Kane Hodder has a very uh, have a special connection. At Friday Thirteenth Round Roundtable Hodder relayed a little bit of what it's like to be so close to Icon. Every time I do a convention or an appearance somewhere, there will always be at least one person that says, "Hey, do the Jason walk." And I'm like, well, that's kind of how I walk. What the, why? What is it? Oh, it must be the door. The character of Jenny Myers, known as the girl next door, is voiced by the talented Christina Klebb. Unlike her character, Christina is a bit of a traveler. Born in New York, Club spent her formative years in Germany, France, and Italy. Dead ass, though. Nudity is one of the hallmarks of fr a Friday film, principally female nudity. In the ninth installment, The Final Friday, Adam Marcus subverted the expectation by including male nudity in roughly equal measure including a scene which has been described by many as the homoerotic shaving scene. I've seen all of the movies and I don't even remember that scene. Oh my god. What was that scene? In Friday, in Friday Lore, Steve Christie is the entrepreneurial son of David and Luis Christie who owned Camp, uh, Camp Crystal Lake at the time of Jason's drowning. Steve Tate takes it upon himself to re renovate the camp and reopen it. By fixing the camp, he draws the murderous ire of the killer. S or ear. Hello. I don't know how to pronounce that. St still reeling from Jason's death. Who knows if it hadn't been for Steve, perhaps Camp Blood would have remained do dormant and the world would have been robbed of one of its greatest or great fictional villains. So much to check in this house. <sighs> Tiffany Cox and Kenny Riddle, Adele, whatever. The Spring Break 1984 Clothing Pack DLC introduced skimpy sims swimsuits and a new challenge for the art team of Ilphonic. In an interview, art director Cole Gray stated, We hadn't built the system originally for the cu customization of swimsuits. We've had to overhaul how the characters function fundamentally. It has to do with a, l a much larger scope of work that involves a gore system. So now we have to have a bunch of new clothes that work with the way our characters pop. Our characters are essentially crash test dummies. They have to break apart at certain locations. It has. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge. Why you gotta? Why you gotta be locked? Rude. Um. Oh, piano. The composer Harry Manf oh, Manfredini was scored. Has scored nine Friday films, but it was first. But it was his first score for the original movie that set the tone for the rest of the series. In an interview. Manfredini described how that score took on a life of its own. The music beca uh, became a character in that film. It was really minimal. There was uh, there were really only two chords in the score. There was a uh, sameness to that score. There was never any melody. I love the music that's in fr the Friday films. The most requested playable Jason was director Adam Marcus and actor Kane Hodder's version in Jason Goes to Hell. This is ironic given how little screen time the movie gives to the corporal, uh, corporeal Jason. 
yeah, I didn't really like the ninth film just because Jason was uh, was like in it for maybe a quarter, maybe not even that. Newspaper. The part of young Jason was played by Aria Lehman. Originally, director Sean Cunningham wanted to cast his son, Noel. However, Noel's mother did not want her son to spend hours in a freezing New Jersey lake before uh, during fall. Crystal Lake Massacre. Seven camp counselors killed by local women in brutal mass murder. The movies are absolutely like, they're, they're great. Eric J.R. La Chapa. Ooh, La Chapa. As part of the Kickstarter campaign, certain high-tier backers could get their likeness included in the game. One such generous backer was Eric J.R. LaChapa. LaChapa's best two stats are Repair, 10 out of 10, and Stealth, 8 out of 10. I still only play as AJ because i rather the Stealth and the Composure be really good. Bugsy Wilson and Chad Kensington. Since the inception of the project, the developers knew that the Friday the 13th experience had to be multiplayer to capture the magic of the movies. The multiplayer experience is what got us the license, said co-creator Ronnie Hobbs. Sean S. Cunningham saw our game, saw that it had multiplayer, and it could essentially play out like a film. They had been wanting to play a f uh, make a Friday the 13th game for a long time too, but all they were ever pitched was single-player games. Mug. The release of Friday the 13th, the game, was slated for early 2017, a time frame that managed both of the uh, both to be wide and, for some fans, vague. This uh, ambiguity caused quite a bit of energy to be directed at Gun Media, and in particular at the community manager, Ben Strauss. It's actually become a meme within our community, said Strauss. Our Str Str Strauss, Strauss, I don't know how to pronounce that either. Someone sent me a mug that said early 2017 uh, on it and in Friday the 13th font. According to director Joseph Zito, the entire cast and crew believed part 4 to be the final Friday the film. Not only was the title the final chapter, the script called for Jason's head to be split open in the final kill. Even Harry Manfredini's musical cue for the f final scene was named La Muerte de Jason. I think that might be Spanish. I could be terribly wrong. But I don't know any other language than English, so. Long Night at Camp Blood, Part 2. The screenplay for the original Friday the 13th was initially titled A Long Night at Camp Blood. Director Sean S. Cunningham, however, had always wanted to, the name of the movie to be Friday the 13th. Even before he had a final, a finished script, Cunningham took an advertisement out in a trade publication to stake his claim to to the popular idiom. The new title was successful, although he can, uh, you can still see references to Camp Blood sprinkled throughout the series. Ah, what else is in here? One of the most uh, emblematic moments of the movie was the scene of Jason in Times Square. Kane Hodder, who played Jason, stayed in character the whole time. There were hundreds of people on both sides of the street watching the filming. With one quick look from Jason, the crowd would scream, cheer, and go wild. Corey Feldman was slated to uh, reprise his role of Tommy Jarvis in this film. Unfortunately, being cast in two Spielberg, uh, Spielberg movies led to scheduling conflicts. A compromise was reached in which the child actor would appear, but only in the opening sequence. Director Danny Steinman arranged for the crew to set up in Feldman's backyard. They put up uh, extra bushes, had a rain machine, and wrapped the shoe in two hours. Tommy's fascination with masks served multiple purposes <laughs> served multiple purposes in this film they served as an homage to seminal 
special effects artist Tom Savini, as well as adding a darker layer to Tommy's character, provided an omen of things to come. According to screenwriter Barney Cohen, they also made a philosophical point about horror, that it is contagious. The horror that Jason dispenses can be passed on to anyone. This film featured a recasted Jason. The filmmakers discovered a 6 foot 3, 250 pound nightclub owner named CJ Graham. Graham was part of a hypno uh hypnoti- hypnotist <sighs> Jesus Christ stage show whereby a magician would put audience, uh, audience members in a trance and ask them to imagine they were encountering Jason voice. Graham would dress as Jason and scare them in the middle of the hypnosis. The production team was impressed and cast Graham as Jason for the movie. Wait. Did that's it? Yeah, for the movie. Okay. Um... Game development can be a consuming and somewhat unique enterprise. Illphonic founder Chuck Brungard described what it's like to be developing a slasher game in a con- uh, conventional work environment. The, the funny thing is what we're in a high-rise building. We're riding the elevator with people who have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, the pitchfork needs to go a little bit further for the eyeball to come out and hang and the blood too and we turn around and there are people huddled in the corner that would have been freaking hilarious to watch you you gotta tease me like this i gotta wait till the full thing just to bullshit broken dick shotgun pocket knife the MPAA Ratings Board, Motion Picture Association of America, and the Friday the 13th franchise has long had a cat and mouse relationship. Director John Carl Buechler has publicly vented his frustration with the amount of footage that had to be cut to attain an R rating. For Buechler, the gore had a purpose, comparing the removal of it to be like telling a joke without a punchline. Sounds like a really bad joke to me. Ophonic and Gun Media found the player feedback from the beta build, uh, build to be in, invaluable toward balancing the game. According to Dev Ronnie Hobbs, one item that required adjustment was the firecrackers. If you played the beta, you'd know that firecrackers used to be the least useful th- item in the game. They were designed to be a deterrent to fuel, fool Jason. You could throw something down, and if he was using sense, he would see sound pings, and you could run the other way. Firecrackers can stun him now. I never played the beta, so I wouldn't know. Uh, I didn't. Even, I knew the game was coming out last year, but I forgot about the beta, and I completely forgot about the backer, so I wasn't able to get the Savini Jason either. Uh, like the movies that preceded it, Friday the 13th, the game has had its own problems with censors. Germany's ratings board, the USK, found the game so violent that they rejected the game at launch. Jesus. It's not that violent. It's only, you know, Jason cutting everybody limb from limb. After menacing the crew of the Grindel... Jason is shot to death by the android KM-14 with half a body and half a head. Jason falls into a nanomed bay that super heals the killer. With future technology, Jason is reborn as Uber Jason. uh, Same bloodthirst but deadlier, nearly indestructible and with limited movement for actor Kane Hodder. The full body suit looked sharp but had a limited range of motion on account of all the metallic pieces. Many kills in this game take their inspiration and origin from the movies. The kill where Jason spears a counselor in the face, for example, in a reference, is a reference to the VW bug scene with Nancy McLaughlin in part 6. Okay. There we go. Alice, the heroine of the first movie, was played by uh, Adrienne King. Her appearance in part 2 is cut short when Jason moves... Or shoves an ice kick, uh, ice, ice pick through her temple. 
The collapsible ice pick prop was not checked properly and on take one did not retract. Uh, thankfully, Kane wasn't injured and didn't need any med spray. Haha, ha, very funny, Ilphonic. Can you... There we go. Among the most interesting deaths in part 5 was the road flare death. In the scene, two greasers, Vinny and Pete, are stranded along the road in the woods, a common enough occurrence in the world of Friday the 13th. Jason ambushes the two and shoves a road flare in Vinny's mouth for the special effects shot. They made a latex version of Vinny's head and sh jammed the road flare in the mouth, making a horrific red glow. I, for a second, I didn't remember that scene, but then I was like, I'm pretty sure that was also the scene where they're in a car and one of them is trying to fix the car. Could be wrong, I'm not sure though. During the sequence where Jason chases Rennie and Sean in the subway car, Two spray painted slogans are clearly visible. Jason lives and Quayton li Qu lives. The first is the tagline of the sixth installment, and the second is a shout out to the band that director Hob Hedden was in as a youth. In the climactic fight of part. Six. Jason pulls Tommy down to the bottom of Crystal Lake. Underwater, there is a metal sign for Camp Crystal Lake with the word blood spray painted over Crystal Lake. It is a homage to the title of the original Friday the th uh, 13th screenplay, A Long Night at Camp Blood. I don't know why a long night at Camp Blood would even be the first thought because it, it doesn't sound as good as Friday the 13th. It just sounds like a movie that somebody would watch and then just completely forget about it. Kane Hodder did the motion capture for Jason's kills. He is known for the intensity and dedication to his craft. For some of the weapon kills, the MOCAP team created a dummy for Hodder to physically hit with rubber bats. According to developer Ronnie Hobbs, a problem quickly arose. That dummy didn't last a week. Every morning, the prop people would be duct taping it back together because Kane would just beat the shit out of it. Well, he is the one that plays Jason, so I'm not surprised that I beat the shit out of it. Tom Savini, whose guidance uh, helped shape the kills in two Friday, uh, Friday movies as well as Friday the 13th, the game, always anchored his special effects in the real world. It can't be preposterous said Savini in an interview because you won't believe it. And while the realness of practical effects came at a cost to to time, resources, and ingenuity for Savini. It was also always worth it. Did I scare you? That's what I do. The Knife. Throughout his career, Tom Savini has been called many things, perhaps most adoringly, the Sultan of Splatter. Dev Ronnie Hobbs gave the rationale for the adulation this way. People always say there's a million ways you can slice a throat, but only one right way, and that's Savini's way. The novel Friday the 13th Hate Kill Repeat sets the stage for the FBI sting that occurs at the beginning of Part 9. In the epilogue of the novel, the FBI have discovered that Jason does in fact exist, exist and goes about setting a trap to send him straight to hell. Again, I never really liked Jason Goes to Hell. Throughout the series, Harry Manfredini's iconic Kiki Ki, ki, ki Mama Ma has been used to underscore Jason's presence in Part 5, that, this sonic moniker is subverted. Tommy Drive is driven mad by hallucinations of Jason rises from his hospital bed as the VO whispers, Kiki ki, ki Ta Ta Ta. As he opens the drawer to see the hockey mask waiting for him, Ki is for kill and Ta is for Tommy. I've heard like three different ones. I've heard Kiki ki, ki Ma Ma Ma. Ki 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 ha or chi 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 ha 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 and ki 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 ta ta ta. This one, understandable to because obviously Jason wants Tommy dead. Kill a ki 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 mama a mama ma would be kill mom, uh, which would be her hearing Jason's voice in the first movie. But when it it kind of makes me mad when people think that he's saying chi 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 ha ha because obviously that is not right. Not at all. Um, I guess it does sound like it, 
but uh, Manfredini did say that it's supposed to be Kiki Ki Ma Ma Ma, uh, at least for the original parts of it, original movies, or the first few movies, I guess. The role of Tommy Jarvis is one of the few reoccurring protagonists in the series. Showing up in three movies, uh, Albite played by three... Al Al I'll be played by th I don't know, played by three different actors. Young Tommy's interest in masks ter uh, serves as a homage to Tom Savini. Tom Savini is a great director for this stuff, or uh, great uh, special effects artist. Murder Strikes Cafe, cafe owner and wife's found slain. Friday the 13th Part 3 is the first movie in the series to break the day implied in the title. The film picks up the day after the events of Part 2, making it Saturday the 14th. The wa uh, and while there are a few scenes on Saturday, the majority of the film takes place on the following day, Sunday the 15th. I understand that it's like Friday the 13th because of the first day of it being. Like, it's it was uh, originally made. Actually, technically, it took place on Friday the 13th, but it actually released on Friday the 9th, I think. I think it was, it was still Friday, of course, but I think in the, in 1980 when it was first released, I think it was, uh, the 9th instead. Um, Jason is dead, two for one, burger sale. I might have to take you up on that offer. Like other movies in the series, Part 2 had a difficult time receiving an R rating from the Motion Picture Association of America. An X rating uh, was only avoided once 48 seconds had been trimmed. One scene that raised the ire of censors particularly was the murder scene of Jeff and Sandra impaled by a spear while having sex in a bed. The most one of the most iconic kills of the series. The iconic stinger in part one, where, Bo where Boy Jason springs from the lake, helped spawn a franchise. According to special effects legend Tom Savini, the origin of the scene started as a conversation he had the director uh, he had with director Sean Cunningham. Savini had just seen Carrie, and had been impressed with the stinger at the end. He su uh, suggested that once the killer had died and the audience was relaxed, Boy Jason should jump out of the lake and attack Alice. Cunningham agreed, and a legend was born. Even without that scene, I think the game, the movies would still be iconic and probably like my at least my favorite horror franchise. I never really liked any of the Nightmare on Elm Streets. Filming Friday the Thirteenth can be a risky affair. During the final sequence of Part Two, Ginny, played by a Amy Steele, is defending herself from the uh, pickaxe wielding killer in one of the early takes. Steele, armed with a machete, slice stuntman Steve. Desk uh, with fingers sending him to the emergency room. Once he returned, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name again. Filmed the remaining takes with a prosthetic covering his on his hand. When it came to creating kills for Friday the Thirteenth, the game Gun Media knew that uh, they needed expertise, and who better than the man who helped create the slasher genre? So they brought on legendary practical effects a guru, Tom Savini. That's what I did in the Friday a uh, Friday movie. Said Savini, creatively kill uh, teenagers in the woods with household implements. It's a living. Somebody has to do it. Jason turned many implements t into tools for murder. However, some of the most censored kills have been. From unarmed combat in part six, Sheriff Garris is bent backwards and broken in half. It has a bloodless kill, but nevertheless was the one that the ratings board had to, uh, the most trouble with, and uh, finding it too intense. Filming on Friday the Thirteenth has always carried a certain amount of risk. Director Tom McLaughlin found this out the hard way. When he cast his wife Nancy in part 6, Nancy played the role of Elizabeth, who Jason spears through the windshield of a Volkswagen Beetle. When it uh, came time to film the shot, Nancy sat in the car as Jason rammed the rear of the spear through the vehicle. 
The windshield gave away but changed the trajectory of the spear, nearly impaling Nancy. Oh my god, there's actually a lot more to read than I actually thought. To promote, Jason takes Manhattan and axe wielding Kane Hodder appeared on the Arsenio, Arsenio Hall show in full Jason uh, regalia. Hodder did speak or break character throughout the entire interview. Create credit to Arsenio for pulling it all off. Preferring manual weapons like axes, Jason has never used a chainsaw in the dispatching of his victims. A chainsaw was, however, used on Roy at the end of Part 5 in the clima uh, climactic barn scene. Pam, played by uh, Melanie Kinnaman, fights off her attacker with a chainsaw, slicing his shoulder to the bone. A chainsaw was never used by Jason himself, but he did, I'm not sure what movie, I think, I think it was part seven. Um, they did. Jason did use a motorized weapon, which was a weed whacker. Special effects artist Tom Savini came to the attention of the Friday the 13th filmmakers from his work on the movie Dawn of the Dead. Of particular note was the visceral nature of his special effects and. Um, kills. It was a realism that was hard won. Savini had been a combat photographer in Vietnam. If the special effects he created didn't give uh, the same feeling as what he remembered from war, they weren't good enough. In part 9, Jason goes to hell. It is Jason's right eye that shows machete damage as opposed to the left eye that is damaged at the end of part. Four, Ilphonic and Gun Media corrected this for the part uh, nine, Jason, in the game. They the dev devs took a poll to see if the mistake should be retconned or let go. The verdict was that it should be fixed. Many at Gun, including Ronnie Hobbs, were still conflicted. There was were some people that wanted it not to be fixed, but if we didn't, we couldn't live with ourselves. Jason Takes May has the only Friday the 13th movie in, a char uh, in which a character is not killed by a machete. Really? I've I seen all of them. I didn't even realize that. Oh. I gotta watch them again. Probably will during Christmas. Uh, the first week of Christmas as well. Oh. The jungle gym in the front of the J Vori's resident that, a residence that Jason and protagonist Stephen Freeman fight on its same uh on is the same jungle jim alfred uh same jungle jim alfred hitchcock used in 1963 for the birds jason's relationship with animals is undefined in part two jeff and Sam, uh, sandra discover a dead dog it is suspected that it is the work of the killer although it's never confirmed in part seven or eight jason takes manhattan the director instructed kane hodder who played jason to kick a dog hodder however Refuse saying it wasn't in Jason's character. You better not kick a dog, that would be rude. Part 7 is perhaps the most censored Friday movie of all time. One particular kill uh, that the MPAA sent, uh, sent back for several revisions was the infamous sleeping bag kill in the movie. Jason, uh, played by uh, Kane Hodder, had to pick up a sleeping bag stuffed with a heavy dummy and 20 additional gallons of blood and slam it against the tree. Hodder struggled to make the stump believable and was relieved that the ratings board limited the scene to one good tree smack. That was, again, one of the most iconic uh, kills in all of Friday the 13th. Besides Bill's impalement in the original Friday, there have been several characters that Jason has affixed to walls or doors or even ratters or rafters. The biker gang character of Fox, played by Gloria Charles, was impaled in the neck with a pitchfork and left to hang from the second story of a barn. The pitchfork was real, but made, uh, but made so that the two prongs in the middle were collapsible. I didn't really like that one, just because... I mean, I just didn't really like Fox. I didn't really like her as a character. Um... 
Even before they had the license, the developers at Gum Media intended to write a love letter to the Friday series and knew they needed the legends to do it. Speaking of their early days, co-creator Ronnie Hobbs did in Mint's words, Our goal all along, all along for Slasher Volume 1 Summer Camp was to get Tom Savini, Kane Otter, and Mary, or Harry Manfredini. We knew that he, uh, we needed those guys aboard. We couldn't do it ourselves. And I think I got everything in this room. Oh, wait, maybe there's... Yeah, okay, that shotgun's not interactable. Um, in part two, there was much discussion about how the killer should be clad. Ultimately, it was the costume designer who brought up the burlap pillowcase. The headpiece was chosen because it was an item that would have been readily available to the killer, though it was never well liked by the production crew. It did serve a bridge to the hockey mask. Can't wait until the full thing comes out because then maybe there's actually going to be something right on this pedestal. And that uh, the third room on this floor would be actually available. One differentiating element of part six is that it is the only movie in the series to feature children at the camp. The decision was a purposeful choice on the part of director Tommy McLaughlin uh, to raise the stakers, or stakes and set the audience at edge. I'm surprised they didn't kill a single child in the film, but I personally think it was, I mean, it probably would have uh, made it to, I guess, I uh, don't know how to put it, but I know it for, It would probably make it a lot harder to rate uh, if they actually killed children in it. And one scene in part six, a group of campers are shown to be sleeping in a cabin. The camera pans over a little girl who has fallen asleep reading John Paul uh, Sartre's novel, No Exit. The novel is about three people spending eternity together in a small room and ends with the revelation, Hell is Other People. Quite an odd book for a child to be reading. I'll read pretty much anything, and, and I did re pretty much read anything I wanted when I was a kid. Um, though I still, I didn't really read much. I still don't really read much. John Shepard played the shell-shocked Tommy Jarvis in the fifth film, A New Beginning. Tommy's psychologically damaged by his run-in with Jason in the final chapter is sent to a treatment facility called P uh, Pinehurst, halfway home. Shepard took the role seriously, spending a few months volunteering at a state mental hospital to prepare. That's dedication right there. Patient suffers from extreme trauma, night terrors, and it's and is delusional. Didn't really serve to be delusional after all, no, did he? Uh, I swear that was there nothing else that could be interactable in here. No, nope. I think I actually covered everything that's in in this beta part anyway. Um, yeah, I think I've actually interacted with everything. Feel like there's still something I can interact with. Um. Oh. All right. Playing one of the few characters to survive a Friday film, Shavar Ross played the heroic, tractor-driven youth Reggie in F Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. Ross was offered a uh, part in the following movie, but turned it down when he learned of the filmmaker's intention to kill the character off. I surprisingly can't remember Reggie. What was Reggie's... I was thinking Reggie was the one that got hit by an axe by that one guy that got mad at him, but I, that wasn't Reggie. I can't even remember his name either. Huh. Reckless Reggie, part four, Roy's Revenge. Are these actual actual novels, or...? Um... Yeah, I think I covered everything in here. Eight. Oh, that's not available yet. Oh, yeah, I also have the... Wait. There it is. The, uh, the song that plays during Crispin Glover's 
idiosyncratic dance is lion a lion's love is a lie love is definitely a lie however during filming it was acdc's back in black that was played on set in an interview glover recounts the scene that was the dance i came up with for it they did not use black back in black in the soundtrack it was certainly an unusual way to dance to that piece of music but the motions of the dance fit uh fit properly to that song if it is uh, correctly synced i think back in black would have been such a better song to dance to in that uh scene um yeah i think that must be it that's in this um oh i wonder if there's like a jason just waiting there stalking his prey that would have been probably a cool uh, like they should have made it so like outside of the window you just see jason peering in uh just uh looking directly into it that into the room that would be freaking amazing i didn't come in here yet oh yes i did yeah never mind i did um oh fire uh phil let me you know did it not what the what is this i thought he just said i could read something That was cool. I genuinely think that I uh, wonder if that was actually true. Like if that actually happened. Um Yeah, I think I actually covered everything in this. So yeah, I suppose I'll just stop the broadcast now because I feel wait. Yeah, I already did those. Yeah, I did everything. Um. Ooh, right, I forgot about the computer. Um gotta check that i don't know how to do the unlocks because i didn't i just pretty much jumped on this as soon as i got the update and i didn't actually check everything but i can go through it i can see all of these counselor lists which i'm assuming are people that worked on the game people that were actually in the game so like uh jr but then there's h2 leaders i don't know how to get the passwords um i'll probably once i fi find out how the passwords maybe the passwords haven't even been um actually come out yet because of it being a beta but when the passwords come out i'll make sure to broadcast it um and actually go through all of the characters to do the uh do it i know i can cha change the date oh that's cool okay you can't i can't actually change the date wait wait oh i can change the date sweet what year can what year can i go up to I can go up to 90, uh, 99 and go as far back as 60. Okay. And I don't know what the data actually does though. Um, I can also reset it to 1.0 beta, but I don't know exactly what would happen if I did that. Um, and I can update it. But to do that, I actually have to use a password. 
Um, if you want, I can select the program and like comment if you want to actually see me reset the virtual cabin to see what happens if I do that. I don't think anything would happen because this isn't the 2.0. This is just the beta. So I think uh, the beta would be... I think uh, I'm assuming that maybe in the uh, when the 2.0 comes out, then I can reset it to beta, and I'd be able to see exactly what would what changed. Uh, you know, it's good. I'm actually warning. This will reset virtual cloud progress to the selected state. Nothing will probably happen. I hope so, but I am going to try this. Resetting virtual cabin, the component, and the game just. <laughs> I kind